My name is Stanley Kasiba and I am 11 years old and I have muscular dystrophy. Stanley always wants the four-wheeler, wants to be on the four-wheeler, but I think he feels freer on the four-wheeler. There's no, he's the driver, the younger kids are younger, so they don't get to drive it yet. He doesn't have to run, he doesn't have to jump. That's that, the motor, the engine is his, his piece that he wins. Stanley truly was shit on twice. Stanley is a little person like me. When I was having kids, obviously knew genetically that there was a 50-50 chance. I took that chance, not thinking twice about it, but then when this happened, I thought, why me? Why Stanley? He already has, you know, this bone disease and being a little person and you know, why? What, what did I do? What did he do? Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is a matter of, of life and death. It often affects boys initially at the, around the ages of three to five. Generally, the muscle fibers degrade in the muscle so that the muscle gets smaller and weaker. They develop progressive difficulties walking. They're often in a wheelchair by the time they're in their late teens or early 20s. It ultimately does result in shortening of the lifespan for boys who are affected. Anyone with the disorder or a, a family member or friend will quickly learn that we take for granted what we can do with our arms and legs. All right. He didn't even start walking till he was 18 months old. Because of the bone disease, we went to a place called Alfred I. DuPont in Delaware for years. We were there for a regular appointment and I said to them, something's wrong. He's, you know, eight years old. He can't even step over a garden hose without losing his balance. I said, it's something else. I guess one of the biggest things that you can tell if something's going on without obviously a blood test is if you pick a child up underneath the arms, his shoulder blades go up and you can see that he has no, no muscle holding him, you know, when you, his physique when you pick him up. Um, and his, his whole body just did that and everyone kind of looked at me and I was like, I, I knew what I saw but I, I didn't know. I didn't know what they were looking at and they knew what they were looking at and I could see it all over their face. They said possibly muscular dystrophy. I remember crying a lot. You did? Mm hmm We started looking online, find, trying to find out more about this and how many different types there were and what type this one might be. And but guess what? That's not what you should do because there's nothing good about it. Yeah. And when you're somebody who knows nothing, you shouldn't read. I actually went into a depression and went right into bed and stayed there for for months. It's just, you, you know, you realize your, your child has a fatal disease that there's no cure for. You don't know what to think of that and you can't fix it. Parents generally enter parenthood not thinking about having a child who gets sick. Particularly if it's a disorder that is not curable or fixable, this means a parent doesn't have control over the situation. I had to be the strong one, I guess. You know, she was in just in depression. Just, you know, there's always tomorrow. There's, we got to take care of the other kids too. Still have those days. You know, it doesn't go away. Is it even going through the other way? Oh yeah, it is. Oh God, good. Yeah. His kids are very active. They, they play sports. They, they run circles around Stanley. It's very frustrating for him, for John, who is seven, to, to beat him to the swings, you know, or go higher than him in the swings. And I've been watching that level yeah. of self-esteem go down. People with muscular dystrophy uh, develop progressive weakness in terms of losing their abilities to do things with their arms and legs 
that they could do last year or five years ago that they now can't do. Go on. Sure. He gets stubborn like that at times. Sometimes he's like, I'll, I'll walk up myself this time. He feels and sorry for himself. He'll wobble and he'll make it his way up the hill. And he'll let him, let him do his, make up his own mind. And when he, when he wants to help, you know, he'll ask. I punch my legs and yell at them. My anger is terrible, but it leads to a lot of frustration. Every, every day is frustration for Stanley. He's got a lot of anger. Boy, when it comes out, it, it definitely comes out. And you hear it, and he talks all about it, that it's not fair, and how come, and first I'm little, and now, now my muscles, and it's, it's heartbreaking. The walk raises money for research. We always have a good time and they always do a good job. It was very organized. Oh, I have my buddy over here, Kenny, who's going to pull our 50-50 raffle ticket. You know, when I see kids like Kenny, he's very happy-go-lucky. He's just so much younger than Stanley. He just doesn't understand yet. He doesn't have those feelings and he probably will when he gets Stanley's age. There, there's a boy that we like to see when we come to the muscle. Stanley. Stanley. He's just a general happy kid. And, and that's what I want. I want him to be happy. Can I come in? It's for people that have, need a wheelchair and they still want to go somewhere. I don't think he really grasped that maybe he would be in a wheelchair and needing that. I don't even know if he really understands what muscular dystrophy is. Well, in the beginning, I was like, okay, we'll do a blood test. Not, not really grasping the whole thing, thinking he, he's fine. And it came back, and the doctor called that night to tell us that for sure it was. And it was devastating. I've explained to him that maybe his muscles don't work like everyone else's, or I, I haven't explained to him that he could die early. I just love my Kenny Frost, and I call him my Kenny Frost because I feel like he's one of my own children. When Kenny first came to kindergarten, he was a little whippersnapper. What do you think about Mrs. Feldman? Do you like her? Yes! He loves learning to music and to song and to dance, so we incorporate a lot of those strategies with him to help him be the best learner he can be. We do a lot of learning through hands-on tactile activities. Kenny is, he is liked by all his peers. He's a very friendly, personable kid. We always lay down on the mat and stretch his lower extremities because his legs are getting very tight. Nice job, there's two. He got on the whiz wheel at the end of his session and was able to use his arms to move his body. This year I have seen um, Kenny struggle because he's losing that muscle ability. It's a horrible disease to watch progress as a therapist because I'm supposed to be helping and I feel like I can't. It's, it's frustrating and it's heartbreaking. You need to use your legs. Come on. There you go. Coming up far. More. Stretching him not only is good for him to keep him loose and limber, but it feels good to him. It feels really, really good to him, like a back rub would to somebody else. And he wants to be stretched, whoever will stretch him all the time. See how long you can keep him up there. Ready? Okay. Wow, that's good, Stanley. The problem with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is there's a mutation in the gene to make dystrophin. Muscle needs dystrophin to hold the structure together. There are studies that are ongoing right now to uh, overcome that block in the gene so that boys with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy can produce some of the missing protein, the dystrophin, so that they can uh, have prolonged muscle strength and hopefully improved survival and ability to walk and use their arms and legs.
and they hear that there was some treatment going on, you know, some miracle drug. I had read about the trial of the new medication that was coming out that had actually was experimented already on a few boys and that had already worked. And from then on out, I was calling and faxing and talking to, to these facilities and to doctors trying to, to get them into these trials. And we did. What happens with the exon skipping is that they're able to inject a small molecule so that the damage to the, to the dystrophin gene is patched so that the dystrophin can now be produced in the muscle. There was 54 boys in the United States that were chosen for this trial, and Stanley was one of them. There was 34 injections. They give me shots, and they really hurt, and they give you bruises, and they sting really bad. MDA, with all this fundraising, um, it, they, it, it's covered. They, they, they pay your airfare, they pay your overnight stay, they pay you, they reimburse you for all your food, everything. Otherwise, I, I mean, I couldn't afford to fly to Baltimore. It was up early in the morning, driving to Albany, going flying down, getting shots, and back to Albany and back home here. When we landed at BWI, that was when they would release the medication. And they have to go to a different building, to a different site. It's under lock and key. It's not at the hospital waiting for us. Everybody has to leave the room when the nurse pulls it out, and it's a blackened bottle. They don't allow the nurse to know what medication or what it looks like, what color it is, nothing. There's a placebo. For the longest time, like I said, it went up to week 17. We didn't know if we were getting the fake one or not. But when you're going for something to us that's so good, <laughs> you can't wait to get there. <laughs> you want them to take a gallon of it and pour it in. There was 34 injections. Week 17 is when I started to notice. I was able to get up a little faster. When I talked to other parents whose kids were in the study, they said the same thing. Around the same week, they noticed a difference. And it wasn't a huge notice like he's walking better. It was rolling over in bed faster. Those were the things that I saw that were better. The technology for the exon gene skipping can be applied to other muscular dystrophies and other disorders that have gene abnormalities so that they can patch these abnormalities in the genes. These really are improving uh, survival in boys with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. So it's a really exciting time right now in 2013. When I talk to the doctors and the researchers, they have goosebumps, and when they have goosebumps, they said, Renee, we've never seen such a thing. I want to tell you that it is the cure for muscular dystrophy, but it is the start. This is something that we have never, ever had before. We are hopeful that whatever medication they find will help. Everyone wants their child to be, quote, normal and you know, able to do all those sports related things and he's not able to do that. I just want him to be happy and to have a job and, you know, family. Friends is not a problem and we'd like to have him for a long time. And the fact is that may not happen, so. If they had a cure, I don't care what it would cost. I don't care and I'd do it. When I pick him up at the end of the day, it's, he's, he's my joy and he's my blessing. If my son ends up in a wheelchair, which probably he will, I'll take care of Stanley forever.